Okay, hello Dresden. So, I'm a neurobiologist and I'm going to explain how your body talks to your brain and what's happening when you wave. But first, we'll draw a circle. So please everyone start like this and then you can just draw a circle in the air like that. Easy, super easy. Okay, close your eyes, draw a circle in the air like that. Still super easy. Now if you think about it, how does your finger know where it is in space so it can come back to where it was, even with your eyes closed? How does this work? How do your, does your body know where it is all the time? So I'll explain that using my body. So if you'll excuse me, I'll unfold this a little just so you get an idea of the skin. So somehow all the information coming from here is going to go to my spine, brain stem, and then to my cortex and my cerebellum. And so this information path coming here is from sensors, and there are lots of different types. So, drawn a few. And so this one here that looks like a spring, it's in your muscles, and it's called a muscle spindle. It's embedded in between the fibers, and it signals the stretch. So this way, this one's stretched, and this way, this muscle's stretched. Muscle spindles also attach onto the tendons. In the tendons, you have the Golgi tendon organs that maybe do the same thing. We actually don't really understand that. But we do know that there's another one in the joints, and the joints are going to signal the angle of my joint, these receptors here, but they typically only fire at the extremes. And then also, of course, in my skin, right? So I know we know that you can touch the skin and somehow you feel touch, you feel temperature, but also when the skin stretches, there's a measure here of what the stretch of the skin is, and that will also help me identify where my body is in space. So how do I go from all this complexity up through the system here to really understand how this information is integrated? And the way that I do it is with a little friend, I use our little friend, the laboratory mouse. It's so decades of work in mice with genetics, from cancer biology, from genetics, have given me different mouse lines, and they're a very helpful tool for neuroscientists, because together we can do experiments like activate and deactivate different sensors, record the activity in different parts of the nervous system, different cell types, and this way start to piece together this complexity and kind of pull it apart. What is the biology doing in different parts? How am I going to really untangle this complex system? So thank you to the lab mouse, and thank you for listening, Dresden.